Everyone's favorite Egyptian archaeologist, Zahi Hawass, has announced that DNA testing has been carried out on the mummified remains of Pharaoh Tutankhamun, and the results of the test, including how he died, will be revealed in 2020, which will be a hotly anticipated event, which could shed light on the mysterious circumstances surrounding the boy king's death. A CT scan in 2006 revealed a broken leg, and this led to theories that he died from a leg break in a chariot accident, though this is highly hypothetical. The much-loved archaeologist who was seemingly boasting about visitor numbers at the temporary exhibition of King Tut in Paris was holding a press conference in Cairo, seemingly planning to release new information not when it becomes available for release, but for public attraction interest at various intervals. It's thought that this is a tactic adopted by Egyptian authorities to lure tourism back to Egypt after a period of uncertainty in the region. He revealed a series of important facts about Tutankhamun's family and then went on to detail that King Tut's father was King Akhenaten and that his mother's mummy is in the same tomb where the grandmother of the golden pharaoh T.A. was buried. The controversial researcher added that Tutankhamun suffered from a lack of blood reaching the feet. He had flat foot and suffered from malaria. 2022 will mark 100 years since the discovery of the tomb of Tutankhamun, who was thought to have been born in the 18th dynasty of ancient Egypt around 1341 BC and was the 12th pharaoh of that period. Forced to the throne as a child, Tutankhamun did not accomplish much as the prosperous era of Egypt had begun to decline with the rise of Pharaoh Akhenaten and his new religious cult. But with the discovery of the tomb of the Golden King in 1922, the international community regained interest in the ancient Egyptian civilization, and today Tutankhamun is the world's best-loved pharaoh. Also broadcast live on TV just recently was the first ever opening of a mysterious box that was found beside King Tut in his tomb, among the other treasures, and it is thought to have been his wife's laundry box, according to an excited historian who recently just got an unexpected gift from the people in charge of the protection of the artifacts of Egypt. Strangely, they never opened the box until now because of a lack of interest in the artifact, but the box is now being prepared for an exhibition at the new Cairo Museum. And historian Bethany Hughes got an unexpected peek inside during the filming of her Channel 5 show, Egypt's Greatest Treasures. Like many of Tut's treasures, the meticulously painted crate was excavated by British archaeologist Howard Carter after he famously discovered it in 1922. Now approaching the century of the findings, it would appear that a real effort by Egyptian authorities is now underway to show off these things and to try to claw back the flailing tourist trade that the region once relied on so heavily for the prosperities of the people. In Egypt's greatest treasure, Bethany Hughes, fascinated by the antique chest, asked museum curator Dr. Essa Zindan if they could open it. To her astonishment and obvious delight, he said yes giving her what she claimed was a world first look inside the ancient trunk. She states, this is a box that has never been filmed before or opened and the doctor just offered to open it for us. Sadly, the box is empty, but you can smell the wood and the resin smells like ancient history. That's her Howard Carter moment. Next year, the Grand Egyptian Museum is due to open. These artifacts are being prepared to be part of this museum, which Egypt hopes will be the greatest show on earth regarding the history of the region. The target is to have it open for the century of King Tut find. We will be keeping tabs on the unfolding events that are underway in Egypt. And of course, we will be keeping you guys up to date with all the important goings on regarding the history of our civilization and the understanding of these things as we know it. We'll be back just shortly, guys. And in the meantime, just remember that it's the ways by which we arrive at knowledge that are hardly less wonderful than the discovery of these things themselves. 
Comments below, and as always, thank you for watching.